This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be unboxing Scare Glow from Masters of the Universe Origins. Now, you know, for those of you who follow my channel, you're like, wait a minute, you like fashion perfumes? Yeah, I also love memories of times gone by. And when a brand like Mattel issues something like this, I go for it all in. Plus, these toys have particular smells and I'm all about perfumes, you know. So smells of certain plastics and colors to me mean a lot. So this is not your typical Masters of the Universe unboxing because it comes from a different background altogether. Before I get to the unboxing, might I remind you, if you haven't already, to subscribe to my channel here on, I wanted to say Instagram, but we are on YouTube. And push the join button next to the subscription button to become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dick Balls Spelled Together. There you also gain access to extra perks. Thumb up this video if you liked it. And thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. Also, thank you to my co-unboxers and co-reviewers of Scare Glow who are with me live here in the chat section because this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. So, for those of you who follow this little ongoing series of unboxing of Masters of the Universe uh, Origins toys, we initiated with She-Ra. And you could check that video out on my channel as well. The one where I talk about how Mattel banned me for LGBTQ content when I posted back in 2010, Adora kissing Catra, and they banned me from the Maddie Collector forum for that photo. Very innocent photo, might I add, but uh, yeah. And fast forward 10 years later, the new She-Ra cartoon turned she turned Adora into a lesbian who fell in love with Catra, and they were together at the end of the day. So times have changed. The next, the week after that, we unboxed He-Man, the master of the universe. Isn't he a cutie patootie? Little beefcake buddy. Then we went for Skeletor. <laughs> yes, we got an unboxing of Skeletor. Love the colorways. I love all of their colors. They're so poppy and toy friendly. Uh, and then we got Beastman the week after that. We unboxed Beastman. So, you know, we unbox one a week. And uh, Beastman is also adorable. So, so we're, gosh, it's already the fifth week. And now we're at number five, Scare Glow. He doth glow in the dark. So let's open him up. And he does come with a comic book. Actually, before I tear the box, I say this in every video, but I got to repeat it again. It's so amazing that they, you know, in the 80s, they did not glossify the text. It didn't have the glossy. By the way, I ordered this on Amazon. They always come dented. So you, you, if you're a collector of mint on card, don't order these from Amazon. It's a mess. But since I'm unboxing it, who cares, right? Um, so it does come a little bit busted, but some people get this whole card completely bent backwards. Amazon squid. Like, if you're a collector of toys, don't order it from Amazon. Anyway. So you see that the Masters of the Universe text is, is glossy. And then in the back, oh, the artwork. Yes, living for this. Again, we got Prince Adam is glossy and so is Scare Glow. And the rest is not. Wait. Oh, that's mean. Clamp Champ. <gasps> Mattel is racist. They did not glossify clamp champ what he wasn't worthy of getting glossified they only made prince adam glossy and scareglow glossy that's not cool mattel well again mattel you know they make their mistakes all the time so anyway they're glossy and then the six figures listed here are also are also all glossy oh now you can see what i mean by glossy look at that gloss there Okay, and you see the figure, the action feature, you put him to the light, he soaks up all the light, he absorbs it, and then you turn the lights off, and then he glows in the dark. So, I'm going to unbox it, you know. First, let me try to get the comic book out. Oh, I don't have this one yet. So, we, it does come with a little comic book. And a little instruction leaflet in 50,000 languages. Glow in the dark feature will last longer if you do not expose this product to intense heat or direct sunlight for prolonged periods of time. Huh. Place this figure approximately 5 feet or 152 centimeters away from a light source. 
That's one and a half meters? Okay, for 30 seconds. Placing this figure closer will not intensify the glow in the dark feature. I didn't know that. That's good to know. And then we got the comic book, which I'm going to have to go through in detail, but it is adorable. I love these little drawings. I love these little comic books. Oh, bring back, it brings back memories. So there's that. Uh, <laughs> he's still in his little box prison. Come on, Scareglow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you out of your little cage. And we are so gonna show the world what it, where it's at. Oh, he can cut you. This one doesn't glow in the dark, though, unfortunately. His little weapon. Okay. He's out of the box. And when I first saw photos of Scareglow, I honestly thought that his cape would be uh, fabric, but it's not. Because Shira's cape, as you can see, it's, it's in cloth. Okay, and also her little skirt there. Um, so I thought, ooh, we're gonna get, you know, because in the 80s, Scareglow had a um, cloth cape. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so difficult to get out. Mattel. I'm getting all these little rubber bands off him. Okay, and now the biggest trick is to get him and his cape out without damaging the cape. Or without breaking it, because... Look at this, this is so insane. It has such a thin little rubber... See it? this little tiny piece of plastic around his neck that I, I see this, it's going it, to, it's going to break like in a year or two. I mean, if you, if you're not careful with this, this is so going to break. Okay. But let me take his head off because yes, you can pop their heads off and exchange and then take the body out. That's what I would recommend. You take out the Cape. You don't pull the body out with the Cape because you don't want to break this thin little line here. Okay, so take the take the, his head off, take the body out. It ain't gonna hurt him, he's a ghost after all. I mean, he's a spirit, well, we don't know what he is. Demon spirit, we don't know. And then you gotta try to not damage the cape. It is bendy because it is plastic, but Hold on, I got little scissors here. Okay, got it. So, yeah, you see what they, when they put it in to the box with the, you see how the plastic Container stressed the cape here. You see that line running through? And that's all cheap packaging. They didn't really care for it as much. But the back is okay, which is which is good because this is what you see when Scareglow is wearing his cape. And it is a pliable, rubbery, pullable uh, plastic. But this little bit of rubby, rubbery, rubby, rubby, you just pull it a little bit, it would break. So I see this cape becoming one of the most precious collectible pieces in like 20 years from now for collectors. Like, hey, I'm selling a scare glow full, you know, with all its accessories and not broken cape. Because that's also today, if you want the 80s scare glow, like that, the most hard thing to find is a scare glow that still has its cape. And it was made in cloth back then. But that's because kids would take it off and it would just get lost, not because it would break. So anyway... Let's put his head back on. Oh man, he's so, oh, I love, you know what? Glow in the dark plastic. I'm such a sucker for it. In fact, um, I also have, when Jeremy Scott used to work with Adidas, you know, a um, sneaker, a wings, Jeremy Scott wings sneaker, fully glow in the dark and the Jeremy Scott for Adidas winged vest, fully glow in the dark. So I'm, like, you can sell me anything if it's glow-in-the-dark. 
<laughs> I'm going to be like, okay, yeah, I want it. So there he is. Of course, I have too many lights in the bunker right now, so I cannot turn them all off at the same time or, you know, and show you how he is in the dark. But you can see here. That's how he looks. He literally turns to that glowy, gooey green color. Um, you know? But uh, I could maybe manage to... We could do this, you know? I could, I could say, be right back. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Now, I've kind of tried to illuminate him as much as I, I can, you know, to give him a little bit of a glow make him glow, fill him up with light, blah, 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 and bam. I still have some backlights in the background, so it's not fully dark in here. That's why you can see me a little bit, but this is scare glow, glow in the dark. Man, this brings back memories. Anyway, you guys, uh, I'm going to turn the lights on now. And I'm back again. <gasps> Magic. So also I wanted to show you an example of a Jeremy Scott. This was one of the last samples before final production. The slime finally went pr in production, was not translucent like this thing. So this is one of the last, I don't want to say prototype, It was a, it's a sample, okay? I do have the final product as well, but this is also, this is inspired by the Mad Balls. Um, also a toy from the 80s, Mad Balls. This was kind of a mix between Slobulus and another one of the Mad Balls. But uh, this is not print. This is actually leather laces going through the entire shoe, like a little bit Frankenstein mode. Now, these were supposed to glow in the dark, but finally didn't. Well, maybe they do. I don't think they do. Mm. Mm, could be glow in the dark slime as well. But loving this, okay? So here you have a huge, with a huge trefoil uh, wing. Mad Balls sneaker from Adidas. Now let's get to the quick fun part. Let's swap off pieces. So let's say He-Man. Oh no, his body, everything's falling off. I'm gonna take He-Man's head off. I'm gonna put, um, oh wow, that's wobbly. So now He-Man has uh, Scare Glow's head and Okay, let's give him Beast Man's butt. <laughs> oh, he's like, oh no, what did you do to me? I look dreadful. Yeah, well, live with it. You're my toy. I get to decide how you're going to look. <laughs> and then you're turning into Skeletor. You're infected with Skeletor a little bit. So one arm is Skeletor. So, but what does it smell like? Olfactive wants to know. Let's smell, um, let's smell, I'm taking this cap off, okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, it's a particular type of plastic smell. Now this glow in the dark plastic smells different to let's say He-Man's plastic or Beast Man's orange plastic. Beast Man has more that's <clears throat> that standard plastic smell. Um, Scare Glow. It's a, uh, it's a bit dusty, like powdery smell, but not sweet. Very, I want to say, like chalk, chalky, like a chalky, uh, dusty powder. Slightly acidic as well. And oh, welcome back, Aisha. Aisha is asking, what scent are we looking at? We're looking at uh, Scare Glow, the perfume by Masters of the Universe. Ooh, I, oh, He-Man's legs just fell off. Okay, it was actually Beast Man's legs. The whole body's falling apart, you guys. Okay, let me put his head back on. Let me see. 
you know, it also smells like being, it smells like olive oil. Like if you've been in the Mediterranean coast, summer, you spent the day on the beach and you rubbed yourself with olive oil, it has that olive oil type of oily smell, you know? Food, olive oil, nothing charming, you know, it's, it smells a bit of olive oil after it's been glistening on the sun for several hours. And that kind of residue smell of olive oil on the skin, that's what it smells like. Powdery, dusty, but chalky. Like chalk mixed with a bit of olive oil that dried up on the sun. Um, on the skin, under the sun. And yeah, <clears throat> summery days. Uh, and you've been to the beach, there's a bit of salt still on your skin, and then there's some olive oil. It's like olive oil mixed with salt and chalk. That's the smell of Scareglow. And his cape... Oh, oh, okay, his cape is a different smell. His cape is more that classic... The classic smell that very soft, bendy plastics have. It smells more, <laughs> funny, this smells more synthetic. It smells more synthetic than this because this one has that olive oil touch and chalky touch to it and salty touch. This one is very chemical. This one is very much. Like a very pleasant plastic smell, which is very bizarre because you might think plastic, it's like toxic. Yeah, it's toxic, but it smells good <laughs> to me at least. It smells... It's a specific smell typical to soft, bendy plastics of this type and nothing else smells like it. So you can't really compare it to anything else. You can compare other smells to this, but this one is not really comparable to any other smell. It's a... Uh... It's a full-bodied smell. You could almost say it's a plastic version of an aldehyde. So if an aldehyde would be transformed for toys, it has an effervescence to it. It's a it's an effervescent crystalline smell of of happy, joyful toy plastic. It's an aldehyde type of smell. It smells like aldehydes. Oh, oh, okay, wait, I'm getting When I warm it up with my nose, I also get a little bit of a beach vibe and under pine cone trees. You know those toys, those blow up toys that you would use, you would blow them up, they're really huge crocodiles, dolphins, and then you go into the water with them and they have a particular smell once they've been swimming in the water, floating in the water, salty water is on them, then the sun is glistening on them. They have that special type of smell. That's what it smells of. And it really brings back childhood memories. So it's amazing. You know, I don't know if I love these toys more for their cartoon aspect or for their smells, because since I was a kid, truth be told, everything, since I can remember, like my mom also told me, like, Jacob, even when you were like, one year old and we would bring you a new toy. The first thing you would do would be to smell the toy. And they couldn't trick me because sometimes a kid has a lot of toys and then they like bring you the same toy again, say it's new. They couldn't trick me. I would smell it immediately and I would throw, toss it to the side if it wasn't a new smell. If it was a smell I already knew, I was like, have it. <laughs> so I was collecting toys according to different smells. So I'm very particular with the smell of my toys, you know. Everything of clothes, of course, of perfumes, a computer. I love the smell of new, a new MacBook. When you open it the first time, that keyboard smell, the electronic smell. To die for. Oh, this is, uh, it's a good smell, you guys. I mean, it's a very particular smell, but Scare Glow is where it's at. The Scare Glow Indoles. That's what I say. Ah, I see. Olfactor Story says, ah, yes, I got it. Mm. 
That sounds better than most of the Louis Vuitton perfumes. <laughs> and for a fraction of the price, just gonna buy the toys and rub them on my skin. Yeah, you could find ways to kind of absorb their smell and put them into perfume form somehow. It's the scent review for me, says Jesus. <laughs> powdery dusty? Yes. The Phantom smells powdery dusty. Um, Skeletor smells very good. I think blue and purple plastics. Yeah, they also have a nice smell. But what is fascinating with plastics, they're very porous. So they also absorb the smells uh, in the surroundings. So Skeletor has been open for a while now, and he has absorbed the smell of the fashion bunker in a way. But with plastics, if you put them in a sealed box, they're going to start evaporating because they have all those um, chemicals in them that make the plastic flexible and they start evaporating and they have a particular smell that's a particular chemical so if you keep this this one he now smells more of the fashion bunker of the room but if i were to seal him off in a box and then like take him out one week later the box would smell of plastic and it's a very fascinating smell i love the smell of plastic i know it's kind of this that's why also with perfumes i say you know Okay, so a lot of natural ingredients are being substituted with synthetic ingredients. Okay, so what? Synthetic ingredients aren't the worst thing. Some of them are really interesting to smell, and there's a lot of memory connected to them. So, Anyway. <laughs> Damn, he smells good, you guys. Mm, scare glow, scare glow. Brings back memories. So anyway, uh, let me read some of your comments still. Uh, Le Région Le Grand reminds me of the smell. Oh, a fact of story says, Le Région by Orissa Le Grand reminds me of the smell of my dolls when I was a kid. Letty is laughing. Jesus says, hopefully not this internal indoles. No, these are external indoles. <sighs> hmm. Olfactor says, oh my god, it's glowing! Yes, it's glowing. So, it's glowing sorta. It's sorta glowing because I didn't turn off all the lights. Oh man. The cape. It's the cape combined with his uh, body that does it for me. Together they're like really like being on the beach with toys. And the sun is setting. Sunset beach with toys. Hmm the best best memories ever so you guys hope you like this uh unboxing very particular strange um, perfume unboxing perfume toy unboxing if you have thumb it up thumb it up let youtube know let youtube algorithm know that we're doing something good here and subscribe to my channel you can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today you can also join me on Patreon, become a patron today, so predictable spell together on Patreon, gain access to extra perks. Amongst the many perks is also being listed here, your name scrolling in the scroll bar at the end of every video as a credit roll bar, credit scroll bar, defining you, the co-producer of the Fashion Bunker. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Super Decob, all spelled together, where, you know, I showcase a lot of my different obsessions. And, uh, you know, if you like the same similar journeys I'm on, follow us. Olfactive says, I would have loved to get these toys when I was a kid. I was such a fan. I wanted the tiger. Oh, you wanted Battle Cat. Well, Olfactive Stories, go on Amazon today because the Battle Cat is back. The Battle Cat Origins is back and the artwork on the box is so beautiful. And it's quite affordable, and it's bring a little bit of your childhood back. Why not, girl? Treat yourself. Get yourself Battle Cat. A fact of story says Benzoin is a note that reminds me a lot of what dolls used to smell like. Benzoin. That's interesting. I think the smell of toys also has a lot to do with the joy we had as kids every time we got a new toy, says Letty. Oh, what a beautiful way to end this video. I couldn't have said, said it better myself. It really is. I'm going to say it again. Letty says, I think the smell of toys also has a lot to do with the joy we had as kids every time we got a new toy. Yes, and smelling this brings me back immediately to my childhood and there's no better place to be than in our childhoods. Thank you guys so much. Until the next unboxing and the next toy sniff, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.